So let's take a look now at how to use student groups with inside homeroom. So now you can see my, I don't know, five or six different widgets and let's look at student groups. Student groups are a great opportunity to be able to identify groups for interventions or track students or subgroups of students within a class or a grade level. So let's look. When I open up the student groups, I see my student groups, which are some student groups that I have already made earlier, and now I want to make a new one. So I choose filter and create inside the student groups. And let me close these boxes, something I've done before. So now I have no students, which just tells me how many they are. And so let's add a filter. First, I want to add enrollments, such as a grade level. I need to choose a school first, but let's choose Black Peak Elementary School. So Black Peak Elementary School has 535 students at it. And so let's choose grade level three. See how many we got in grades. So they have 95 third graders. All right, so now there's 95 third graders at this elementary school. And now I want to say which students at the end of last year are currently right now are at risk for reading. So I go to my risk levels, and these are based on our ABC indicators. And I don't need a high school index and a middle school index because I'm in an elementary school. And now I'm going to look at my indicators. And I am going to look at students that are at risk in the EIRA reading. And so by clicking that and then choosing at risk students, I now have 17 students that are at risk. Now that's one way I can do it. There's another way I could choose my reading risk students. I could get, get to go to my filters and then I could go to assessments and then I could choose students because this last one shows me just the kids that were read so if I go to an assessment such as EIRA and I look at ERA try three because I think it's in and I could say I want the at-risk students for the ERA try three and there are only two at-risk students that had taken the EIRA 3. Now, let's add another assessment. I, I achieved good there. I want to just add now additional EIRA try 3 grade 3 try 3 and I'm going to also include some risk. So there I've added and now I have 12 total students that are at risk for the EIRA grade try 3 at risk in some route and that includes any I can always choose to say all which would be none of course or I can choose any that would be in place I wanted to use like the DRA too also so there's how you create this group alright so now let's save this group and I'm just gonna say at risk risk grade 3 and I'll save it so now I've set my group now the now if I want to see the students I can click here and there are my at-risk kids that are at this group so now I have my 12 students that are at risk what I can do now is say wow Let's share that group. My reading specialist might want to be able to also see that group and give them additional assessments to see what they need. So if I go here to that group and I click here to um, copy the group to other users, I can select the role of a specialist and of the school what school did I say? Oh, it's showing me the regular schools uh, if I chose um, a teacher or a specialist or administrators but in this case I want to start with a reading specialist so let's just say 
I wanted to copy this to I don't know, John somebody. So John D to the superintendent. So I want to copy it to John and say, you now, because he's the, my reading specialist, you now have access to my at-risk third grade readers. If I had a reading specialist, I could do that, and now that person would have access to it. So making groups can be very powerful in terms of sharing a group that you all created and then working together to help uh, provide support for those students.